Thank you. New overnight crews are cleaning up after a fire outside Bobcat of the Rockies on Pony Express Drive in Parker. The South Metro Fire Department says tires and pallets caught fire outside the building. No one was hurt and there is no damage to the building itself. It's still not clear just yet how this fire started. Today, jury selection begins for one of the former Clear Creek County deputies charged in the death of Christian Glass. Andrew Bune faces second degree murder charges for shooting Glass during that call. Glass called 911 for help during a mental health crisis. Bune ended up shooting Glass through the window of his car. That trial is set to last three weeks and the jury selection process is expected to be lengthy. Also today, the man charged in the death of a 14 year old who died of fentanyl poisoning is set to be sentenced. Back in February, a jury found Cesar Eduardo Mejia Sanabria guilty on charges of fentanyl possession and conspiracy to sell or distribute the drug. They found him not guilty on charges directly related to the Aurora teenagers overdose. Police say they determined that Mejia Sanabria was the dealer in the case based on text messages. His sentencing is set for 3 o'clock this afternoon in Arapahoe County. New overnight, there's been significant progress in a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. This is according to Egyptian state media. The deal would require Hamas to release some Israeli hostages and for Israel to release Palestinian prisoners. Leaders from both Israel and Hamas met in Egypt to negotiate. Last week, President Joe Biden called Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to push for a ceasefire. Netanyahu has also faced demands to bring hostages home. There is no timeline for when a deal may come together. In Washington, the House is set to vote this week on a resolution that would oppose a ceasefire. It would support Israel's right to self-defense. Republicans have criticized Biden for calling for a ceasefire. No matter how the House votes, the resolution is just symbolic. It wouldn't impact any current policy. Meanwhile, in Gaza, the director of the World Food Program says they have enough food for more than a million people. They just need to be able to get it in. On Friday, Israel said it would reopen the Erez crossing in northern Gaza for aid. But as of this morning, that plan is delayed. Israel says it's for logistical reasons. The director of the World Food Program says that crossing is essential to getting food and other aid in, and they will only be able to help if workers can do it safely. It is now 606 on your Monday morning and this morning the FAA is investigating another problem with the Boeing plane. This time a Southwest plane took off from Denver, then made an emergency landing when an engine cover flew off. Uh, let's go ahead and declare an emergency for Southwest 3695 and uh, we'd like uh, an immediate return. We got a piece of the engine cowling hanging off apparently. That was air traffic control declaring an emergency landing for the flight. This is video a passenger on the plane tweeted as the plane was moving down the runway. The flight originally took off from Denver a little before 8 o'clock yesterday morning en route to Houston. It was a Boeing 737, which is in the same family of planes that have made headlines recently. Like back in January when a door plug flew off a 737 MAX flight, Southwest says that they were able to get people from this flight onto another flight to Houston. A new report shows another concern with flying, TSA screening. Yeah, the report shows hundreds of people have slipped past, slipped past part of the screening process in the past year. More than 200 of those people were trying to get to the terminals through exits, and around 80 people walked past the podium where you get your ID check but still went through the rest of the screening. Those numbers are small compared to the millions of people who fly in the United States every year, but the former TSA deputy administrator says it's a sign for air Ports to start making improvements. That's something that could be mitigated. It goes back to the equation, where is your vulnerability in the airport? This has now become a vulnerability and you have to pay attention to it. Of course, those upgrades, yeah, they cost a lot of money, but he says improvements like physical barriers and AI cameras can make a big difference. Now, earlier this year, you may remember, DIA opened a new high-tech security checkpoint at the airport, and the airport says this will help keep people safe and make lines move faster. Today's the day.
All right, we got our glasses ready, ready. right? I can't read with these, but they're pretty <laughs> cool, right? In just a few more hours uh, to go until the solar eclipse. That's right. The moon will completely block the sun, and some parts of the U.S. will have about four minutes of total darkness in the middle of the day. Now, here's a look at the path of totality. It's going to start with Mexico's Pacific coast, then continue across the U.S. up to New Hampshire and Maine. Then it will cross into Canada and end on the Atlantic coast of New Finland. We won't see an eclipse like this again, by the way, in the U.S. at least, until August 2044. So get out and see it if you can. Yeah. A group of cadets from the Air Force Academy will be traveling as well. They're doing it to help with NASA research. Pretty cool. Over the weekend, the group left for Texas and Illinois. Cadets will capture photos of the sun's corona for official NASA documentation. I'm very excited. I've been anticipating this eclipse since the last one that came through America. And until this event was organized, I thought I was going to be able to see it. Just been interested in space and physics and astronomy for years and finally being able to uh, you know have the technical background and having the opportunity to go and collect data ourselves it really feels like uh, we're making a big impact you can tell how excited they are the energy in their voices and they aren't the only ones helping out with research that's right at 6 30 our courtney Yoon is going to join us live to talk about the work that cu denver is doing today and the high school students who are helping them out as well and you got your glasses ready my friend <laughs> We're ready for that because we're going to see some sunshine around here today. But let's take a look at the weekend ahead. Never too early to do that. It's going to be a split weekend. 75 degrees, pretty nice on Saturday with sunny to partly sunny skies. Then a system comes through Sunday cooler, only 62 degrees, which is actually about normal for this time of year, but a chance for showers and thunderstorms. And for those heading out the door right now, we're taking a live look from I-25 and Northwest Parkway. So between Baseline Road and 144th Avenue, you can see those flashing lights. That's because there's multiple cars involved in this crash. We have several crews on scene. We know it's also a rollover crash and the on-ramp is blocked right now. If you're heading into E-470, again, this is not where you want to be this morning because traffic right now is basically a big parking lot.